to get to your audio feed we need to open up this box here which is where the cart slot is there's also a couple of components we need to remove in here as well so uh, we'll do that now Okay, with the cover off, there's another two screws in here which we need to take out, and then we can lift this board out of this casing. Okay, really, that's just uh, uh, RF shielding in this box. <coughs> Okay, here we have the the board in question. So there's a couple of components we need to remove here. It says uh, to remove them if fitted. So we need to check if this board is actually fitted with the components or not. So apparently there's a resistor somewhere here. All right. So I have inspected this board very closely and I don't have a resistor 231. It is not there. There is everything else. There's a capacitor 231 which is in the middle of all the resistors but there's no resistor 231. So obviously I can't remove that part because it's not on the board. So the other part I need to remove is here somewhere, it's a transistor if I can see that picture correctly. So we definitely have this component, uh, it's a transistor I believe, it's marked Q202. So it's this uh, black item here with three legs on it, as you can see we said it Q202. So we need to remove that. I think what I'll actually do is snip those legs and remove them one at a time okay I'm paranoid about putting another trace off the board here so that's why I snipped those so what I'll do now is use a pair of pliers or something to grab each leg and slowly put it out as I unsolder it. So if I put a, a flat head tweezers here. Didn't want to come out. <laughs> okay. That's that removed. The the instructions say that to remove the components. Uh, if they're there, if applicable. So these are the all the main resistors that come from this chip. In the instructions, the resistor sits right up in here, in this gap. Uh, but it's not there, and I don't have a resistor 13 here, or 213. I have a capacitor 213. I have a resistor 212, 214, 215 but no 213 so obviously we don't need to remove that part um, because it's not there so there's not much else I can do there is uh, quite a lot of differences in these boards so you will probably uh, find some differences yourself if you're doing this 
because uh, the instructions here that are provided with the mod board I basically just give uh, one example for each region sort of thing or each model you know where there's one example for the six switch there's one example for the junior etc etc it doesn't go through every revision of every board otherwise the instructions would be 10 years long next I need to locate the uh, audio in uh, feed this being a PAL board it's slightly different from the NTSC board so okay we're from there one two three which is this flat solder point here I think well, if I can find my screwdriver I'll be able to show you so uh, this point here is our audio in if we can bring that in closer here's a, a flat solder point here just here is where we need to take our audio feed from so I'll actually put a little bit of solder on that before I start just to make it a bit easier for yourself to attach the wire hopefully you can see what I'm doing here if I find my point I've lost it again, yep there's it there I see where my solder iron is, ok it's a hard thing it's easy enough doing this but trying to keep everything in shot while you're recording it is uh, another thing entirely <laughs> ok, there's a little blob on there so we need to bring this part of the, the board back again this sort of sits like this thereabouts so if we flip the whole thing over and find which wire it is first before I start audio in is blue <coughs> Lovely. Just check the other side of that and see if it needs snipped or not. Um, no, that's okay. Oh, it is a bit long, but I uh, just fold it over. It's not too bad. Right. Well, according to the instructions, that's everything done. I just need to connect the remaining wires to the RCHX which I'm actually going to do uh, before I go as far as drilling the, the case uh, I don't want to have to I don't want to drill the case and then this not work so I'm going to attach the RCHX to the wires now and plug it all in and see if it works alright I think I have this wired up correctly I uh, have my, I've actually put the uh, colours on the wrong wires here but the video feed and the audio feed this will just be mono, you can't actually fit a second or a third jack and have sort of dual mono but I'm happy enough to be just one uh, so yeah they're going Round to my little uh, portable DVD player here, which I use for testing. It has a line in on the back of it. It goes to the the wires here. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Uh, hopefully, we won't get any magic smoke. Here we go. I suppose it would help if I turned the DVD player on. Oh, there we go. First go. Brilliant. The camera's not going to pick up any sort of quality there though. Um, it says in the instructions that uh, if you're not happy with the colours you can tune this uh, potentiometer here and it will uh, improve or reduce the colours on screen but 
to my eye on this little screen that's absolutely perfect where it is um, I'll test it out on several televisions uh, once I have this sort of uh, put back together so the next step is to drill the holes on the back of the case here and need to figure out where I'm going to put them that's uh, actually the bottom the bottom part of the case where the holes will go so around here somewhere or possibly the other side I'm not sure yet I'll set everything back into the case and then I can decide where the most room is but yeah absolutely brilliant I was uh, quite nervous turning that on there because I pulled that trace off the board but you know I was able to attach it further on up the trace and there's no uh, no ill effects so I suppose I may start the game here and see if the sound has worked I've just use a Mega Drive controller here okay sounds good Alright, so I've got my uh, composite ports uh, put in here and uh, yeah, a really nice, uh, really nice fit already there for my uh, wires to be soldered onto and I've got this uh, the motherboard and stuff back together here uh, this blue wire here is the audio feed that's the rest of the wires going for the video and stuff and the output wires are coming up the back of the board here just to sort of tape them on there and that's some coming up and they're ready to be soldered to the RCA jacks alright so I've got these uh, soldered in here um, if you can see here I've actually uh, bridged the two ground points uh, these both share the same ground wire uh, this is the video in this side, the yellow wire and audio on the other side so yeah I'm ready to put this thing back together here and test it out alright it's actually the following evening now um, I decided it was sort of time for bed about 3 o'clock in the morning last night uh, yeah it's just sort of hit a wall and was knackered so the last bit of footage there uh, I shot during the day today so it's all finished and uh, yeah working perfectly really happy with it uh, apart from the the pad that lifted off the board I didn't have any problems it was pretty easy install um, yeah the like, like I showed you the the pad coming off the board wasn't the end of the world it was able to work around it but it just goes to show that you know these things are 30 years old well yeah around probably around about 30 year old 35 year old even uh, so you need to be careful with them and accidents do happen uh, the install looks really neat and clean I'm really happy with how it looks it almost looks like it's there from the factory the holes um, it says in the instructions I think it said a quarter inch drill but my drills are all metric so what I actually did was uh, I got a, a scrap piece of plastic and I drilled a few different holes until I, you know, I tried these in the holes until I got one that was a perfect fit and then I knew which size of drill to use and I used a, a bradle or a, you know, a metal point and marked the holes first before I started drilling them and it came out really really nice and the picture of it is absolutely superb far better than the RF and the RF on this was good to start with so I uh, Plug it all in here. Yeah, 
Okay, this wasn't really a, a tutorial video. It was more of a sort of follow along video. Uh, if you buy one of these kits off eBay, there's a link to PDF documents for your uh, specific system. So you can just download the PDF document and it will uh, give you all the instructions you need really. Like I said, there were some differences in the motherboard of this and the one in the, in the actual tutorial. Uh, but there wasn't really that much of a difference. Nothing that uh, caused any problems anyway. Just lift it off the tripod here. And uh, we'll play a bit of Frogger here. So I know this uh, this won't do it any justice of how, how clean the, the picture is, uh, but it is really really nice. This little uh, DVD player doesn't put out the, the best picture at the best of times. It's not a particularly clear screen, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, it's really crisp, nice crisp edges and really, really strong colours. So yeah, really happy with it. Definitely recommend getting one of these boards off eBay. Uh, so it worked out it was thirteen pounds something with free shipping. So for less less than fifteen pound, uh, really worth uh, sort of future proofing your Atari because you know a lot of TVs that are coming out now don't have a RF a tuner in them. So. Yep, I'll be able to hopefully keep this thing for years to come. So I hope you enjoyed the video guys. As always, feel free to leave a comment. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.